it's all about the content. Um, so, so she um, is a registered nurse. Okay. And um, she wants to do, it's kind of like a support services kind of uh, company that she wants to scale. Um, and Monica Wheat's going to help her do that. Support services like? So, um, she's an advocate for people's health. Okay. Mostly older people who have had some kind of surgery. Okay. Um, and to keep, hospitals get a fine for readmission rates. Mm. So if you are in the hospital overnight for any period of time, and then you go back within less than two weeks, that's considered readmission. Um, and you got to pay extra for that. You do. Well, the know. hospitals do. Oh, okay. And so it's you know they try and pump you full of medication to the point where they don't have to readmit you, or you don't you don't come back. I didn't know that. So people do come back. It's Who's pretty dire? Who's what's the hospital that readmission fee of two weeks? Who do they have to pay that to? Like the state? That's a good question. I don't know exactly. You know what I mean. <laughs> Sorry, it's not my thing. Have a lot of. But yeah, we should uh, figure it out. Nope, I'm right now. I'm just gonna have to spread. <laughs> Things that you usually you, 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 you've been here before. I've been here before. Yep. Um, I'm not. I can't remember how it comes, but pancakes, scrambled eggs. Crispy, crispy bacon. All right. Pancakes good here? Yo, yeah, really good. I'm a pancake aficionado. Okay. <laughs> um, and uh, vanilla milkshake. Damn. Oh, I don't think we got any milkshakes this morning. We waiting on the milk and stuff to come in. At least you know it's fresh. <laughs> <laughs> and the pancakes too. <laughs> That's the thing about having an early breakfast. <laughs> um, do you have apple juice? Apple juice. Yes. Can I have three pancakes and uh, a side of bacon and some orange juice, please? Sometimes I make it for myself, help me heal the pain In my real life, never feel a thing, more like Novocaine uh, I'm to the bullshit, we hear I'm letting freedom reign And they took down the playground because they are trying to sell this uh, empty school So the city owns this school The city owns this? The city That's owns huge. this so I, was, I was in the process of buying an apartment building in St. Louis that was an old yeah. School. You can make schools into really nice apartments. Yes, you can, my friend. And that's what I tried to say to Alicia, who is the assistant superintendent for the district for the uh, school district. That's interesting. Um, it's very interesting. Very. So the school is trying to sell 24 abandoned schools. Okay. The district. Please go straight. Go straight. Yeah. So those were the. So I I bid for six lots. Well, I actually bid for. Th I can take them that way. I don't mind. I can cut this off and rent. It's interest. I got a sister in law there, there that works for the city around here. Okay. And so these people don't have backyards. They have water with yachts. Mm. You want me to cut this off? And, and I mean, I can tell you, I drop you off, and I can take you guys riding, no charge or nothing. Because <laughs> interest in what you're talking about. I it's retired true. from GM, okay. and I got my 401. I want to put into something. Okay, so I, I, how give about me one second, my, okay? Give no, me one. go to my house and oh. then turn it off. Okay, okay. Go to my house. Okay. So my house is near here. Because I like what you're talking about. Yeah, so. <laughs> so, um, on some of this money. I, I, I'm, I'm not just, trying to brag. I retired from GM. And my 401, I got $146,000. Me and my wife looking for something. See, I got to show you how you can roll that over, too. If you want, if you don't mind, after we drop her off, I, I'm going back downtown to the Detroit. Oh, okay. I don't have no problem with it. I don't have no problem. Oh, perfect. But... You know, you and we've been looking at property, but you know what we've been doing wrong? We've been looking at property like Detroit Edison area, that um, Boston, Boston, Edison. Edison. Boston. Nah. Too much. they want too much. They yeah. want too much money. Nah. And, and but I'm thinking I can Let get something that. that I can put a little money into it and get rid of it, because mm -hmm. them white folks moving. I hate to say it, they moving back over in that area. No doubt. I'm thinking if I keep it for about two years, put whatever I can mm -hmm. get in there and get out of it. The thing about you, you're thinking about too much of trying to do it all yourself. It's something in today's society that's not talked about enough is mental health and going to go see someone for help, especially athletes, because we're supposed to be these big, tough, macho men, you know what I'm saying? But 
in reality, this is extremely important. Um, so like moving forward, like after that happened, when it, come, when it came to training, when it came to getting after it and grinding, like me personally, I was a bench player in college before all this happened. Did not see the field, didn't even travel with the team. Like to today's standards, society standards, I was a bum. Like I was not good at football. But after that experience, it completely shifted my paradigm and I knew that it was time to get after it and let's go. Like you put me through any workout, you put me through, I could run a 5K right now and never run a 5K in my life, but it's not as bad as being tied up, covered in your own urine, promise you that. I challenge you to honestly just shift your paradigm, challenge your mind to start thinking different in a sense of how can you take advantage of every opportunity? There's opportunity everywhere, especially Honestly, you got all these teachers in this building right here. Most people don't take advantage of their teachers. These people literally would give their left pinky toe to help you go anywhere you want to go. But most of us don't take advantage of it. I still talk to my third grade teacher, just from that perspective, just kind of give you guys a little bit of perspective. Like, these people, reach out to them, they will help you. Shout out to your boy, Team Money. Yeah, right. Jasmine, come, come to the auditorium. Come to the auditorium. Yeah, watch your back, bro. <laughs> 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 Add me on Snap. I tell Help King One. Watch my back, man. Tell me. Give yourself a shout out too. Add me on Snap and Instagram. Tell King One. We are here. Yeah. 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 Who's this? Is? I love you. Such a hand. Thank you. No problem. Send your keys. Send mine. Send my brother's. Oh, come. This kid right here comes from the back. I'm gonna take some of the other stuff from my office. Hakeem, do you enjoy being in the NFL? I'm retired now, so. But how, how was your time there? Did cool. you like it? It was a job, like mm. most jobs. Good. <laughs> What else? Any questions? Uh, no, we're about to do Q and A. You can. Uh, I'll take that now, brother. Right. Appreciate you. Right. Appreciate right. that. Give yourself another shout out. Uh, add me on Snapchat and Instagram. <laughs> Tell King One T A L E B K I N G One. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and guess what? It's okay to be like this all the time. Like I used, like I used to get made fun of when I was younger because I was the dude who was so corny. Like, why are you being so corny, bro? Like, corny is what's gonna make you successful in life. Trust me. Because guess what? 97% of America does the same exact thing every single day. 3% of America owns 97% of all the wealth in the country. 97% of America owns 3% of the wealth. The 3% is doing something different. Those are the people in high school that you called corny. Those are the people you said, what the F are you doing? Why aren't you going out with us on Friday? Those are the people who face some situations with empathy instead of rage and like F you and F that. and because I got three negative comments on my post, I'm never gonna post again. If you wanna, if you wanna be different, you gotta do something different. It's super practical, it's nothing like, people come up to me and say, bro, you're so lucky, you went to the NFL, you're investing in real estate. I literally say, like, F that. Like, you don't understand what I, the type of work that I put in to be here. Like when I was from January to April, before the NFL draft, I was training for about 12 to 14 hours a day. My commute was an hour and a half each way and I had lunch for an hour. So I had four hours a day of free time. Those four hours, I was listening to podcasts and audiobooks on how to invest in real estate like on my own. And as soon as I made it to the NFL in April, I bought a four-unit apartment building. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, damn, there's no, there's no luck in that at all. It's straight practical. Like, four months of straight work. Like, Monday through Saturday. Sundays was my only free day. Like, straight up. Put my MBA on hold just to do that.
I had two. Like one, like one was like my dad is always my biggest role model, just because like I always wanted to be like I always I used to want to be a. He's, my dad was a state trooper in New Jersey, and he just retired. I wanted to be a cop growing up, just like him, like straight up, because he was. What'd you say? Wants to be a cop? Yeah, like I mean, I was. That's awesome. Yeah, my dad was like, I, my dad, we just had a conversation like last week. He was like, I remember when you came up to me and was like, dad, I can't wait until you grow up and we're doing patrol together. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm still doing patrol when you're that age. Like I, I must have screwed up. Like he kind of told me like in retrospect, but I remember saying that to him. But just because it's the way like he handles himself, the way he treated people, the way like the guidance he gave me, like, I mean, I grew up in a household with both of my parents like thankfully it's not usual like in 2019 like I grew up with a roof under my head whereas people in my town didn't live the best and like I know the sacrifices my parents made and like I strive to be the dad that he was to me like to my daughter now and just like the man that he is and then as I got older especially when it came to like motivation my biggest motivation was my little brother because like I told you guys earlier like I was like, n like, not kidding. Like, I was really a bench player in college. Like, I did not see the field. But my little brother dropped out of college as a sophomore and went to the NFL. So yeah, 20 years old, can't even buy a damn drink in the NFL. Like, that was my, like, that's, that's all the motivation I needed. Like, I, back to if he can do it, I can do it. No, that's, that's going to happen. Like, 100%. I don't doubt it at all. Like, you're so young. Like, Figure out what figure out what lights you on fire. When I figured out what I lighted me on fire, when I knew that real estate was the end all, not the end all be all, but lit me on fire, it was last last off season. I had decided I didn't want to be a small time investor and just invested in small like duplexes and fourplexes. I wanted to be make I wanted to do like twenty to hundred unit apartment building. So I knew what I had to do. I had to figure out my markets and I had to go to them and build teams there. Property managers, investors, accountants, attorneys, um, all of that in each market. Brokers. So January 1 hit, as soon as we didn't go to the playoffs, Lions last year. Next day, January 1st, I was in. I went from Detroit to Phoenix for three days, to Las Vegas for three days, to Columbia, South Carolina for three days, to Indianapolis for three days, and then drove from Indianapolis to St. Louis. And I realized I was on fire. Like, I realized, like, this is what I need. This is what I, this is, this is me. And you'll know when that happens. And when that happens, you double down. Really. <laughs>